I recently went to a protest in London. Today we are at the March for Medical Freedom, which was a five mile march through, not central London, but through London. Um, amazing, amazing how many people are here. And just a few words on the intent and I think the title of this. So it's a march for medical freedom. And what people are generally saying is no compulsory vaccinations, um, which actually is the, the primary, I think, Thing. You can see the signs around here, it's mostly about vaccinations. So, medical freedom. If you don't have medical freedom, you don't have freedom. And if you can't decide what is injected into your body, you are no longer autonomous. You have no autonomy at all. And the people here realise this. This is this, and this vaccination is to me, and I think to many people here, an indicator of the level of government control now. There is a real sense here that people know they are losing their freedom and they know that this is a method by which they are losing their freedom. If the government can exercise such control over you as to inject you with a serum, an, an unlicensed, pretty much untested, uninsured vaccine, then look at the level of control they're exercising over us. They are exercising this control via fear, which is almost always how governments exercise control, fear. They are frightening people. And walking around London today, I've got to say, heavily, heavily, uh, a high percentage of people still wearing masks, higher to me than other parts of the country that I've seen. I think there's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, one is, and this may sound cheap, but actually it's true. L London is very left-wing nowadays, and the level of compliance among left-wingers is actually higher <laughs> these days than it ever has been. But the fear is large in London as well. You can feel it, and you can see it on the tubes. You've got uh, uh, posters around telling you to wear your face mask. Um, I've seen it on the sides of buses. I've seen it on and passing buildings, wear your face mask. We've just, we've just, just come through Brixton and we've passed an, an Iceland, where I used to shop actually when I lived around here. And in the window were signs on every window asking people to wear face masks. And this is no longer compulsory, but people are still being asked to wear it. And the level of compliance seems sadly quite high in London. Something I've, I've, I've noticed walking around. But the people here, get this. They really do get this. They know their freedom is being taken away. They know that it isn't just about a vaccine. It is about the level, this level of control, an extraordinary level of control. Alright, I just want to say a few words to and about the mainstream media. I have this sneaky suspicion that today, if reported at all, will be reported as a few hundred people. This is not a few hundred people. This is thousands of people. And the mainstream media does this to try and persuade us, to try and persuade you, people out there, that this is a marginal movement. It isn't. It's big. But it must be bigger, and it should be bigger, and the irony of it all is that it would be better, bigger if not for the mainstream media. Now there are people I know, there are millions of people sitting at home, watching the mainstream media, thinking that this is a marginal crowd, but believing that maybe they've got a point. People who are, the only word for it is lonely. People who are lonely, who think that they are alone in all this. I really would encourage people to come to these marches and to come to these rallies because they are bigger than you think, they are hugely diverse, I don't like to use that word, but in a good way. There are people from all different walks of life here and they all know that something very sinister and dark is going on.
And that sinister and dark is that they're losing their freedom. There are millions of people at home who know this as well. They might not even be able to articulate it to themselves, but they're not on their own. And if you are one of those people, I can assure you, you're not on your own. Come along, you will see. These are not tinfoil hat conspiracy theories. These are people from all walks of life who know that their government is taking away their freedoms. If you feel like that at all, if there's even a part of your mind that thinks something not quite right here, come along, find out more and find out that you are not on your own and find out that this is real. They are really taking our freedoms away. Confront them, join with other people and stand up, stand up to this. You're not on your own. Just look behind me and you'll see that you're not on your own. This is part of the Great Reset, and the Great Reset is a change, dramatic change, in the relationship between the people and the government. It isn't confined to coronavirus, though. Climate change is part of the Great Reset, and yes, mass migration is part of the Great Reset. Now, if only we could get this many people out protesting against that level of control, that change, that Great Reset, then we'd be in a much better place. But it is really encouraging to see this many people out here. It's been a great energy, it's been a great day, um, and it's not over yet. People were marching against forced vaccination and so-called vaccine passports. It was attended by thousands of people from all walks of life. There was an incredible atmosphere and people certainly seemed to be having a good time. And who can blame them? We're just coming out of a long period of house arrest. On top of this, the mainstream media and the politicians will only allow one narrative on vaccination to be heard. And that is that the vaccines are wholly positive and will give us back our freedom. This is absolute nonsense, of course, and millions of people know it, but they are not represented in the media, and many will no doubt feel completely alone in thinking what they think. Protests allow people to get together and talk about these issues freely. It's very important that we can do that. But I couldn't help but wonder at the time. Just imagine if all these people stood for election. Protests are great and they're important. But the hard truth is that politicians don't pay attention to them. The hard truth is that politicians will only pay attention when their cushy, highly paid, high status jobs are threatened. That's when, and only when, they'll sit up and take notice. The only true power is at the ballot box. And the only thing politicians care about is the ballot box. Let's take the EU as an example. For years, people had wanted to leave the EU. Many people had campaigned for it for a long time. But it was only when UKIP began winning seats on councils and in the European Parliament that the mainstream politicians began to care. If UKIP hadn't threatened the Tories at the ballot box, there would have been no EU referendum. Think about that for a second. You realise that it's true. I greatly admire those who go out and protest. I really do. But if those people really want to achieve their aims, they must put themselves forward, stand for election, and win elections. That's the only way. I am therefore asking those protesters to join For Britain. If you want your freedom back, you must realise what threatens it. Covid, yes, but not solely Covid. The threats to your freedom come from a variety of sources, and you must fight them all. Continue to protest by all means, but power sits in the elected chambers, and it is therefore vital that we sit in the elected chambers. Join for Britain, stand for election, take back your freedoms. 
Don't rely on the politicians who took them away to give them back to you. It doesn't work that way. This is the only true option. Make your voice heard loud and clear and allow the British public the chance to vote for the restoration of their liberties and yours. Join us at www.forbritain.uk. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you would like to stay updated with all of our latest videos, please like the video below and subscribe to our channel. As you probably know, For Britain is shadow banned on most social media, so it's really important to like and share our videos in order to get our message out. Thanks again for helping us to fight back. Thanks again for helping us to bring back Britain.